Hi, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the unit Restrict Login Hours and IP Ranges. This is the first unit in the project Protect Your Data in Salesforce. I'll show you how to configure your Trailhead Playground, and I'll also talk you through some of the business concepts that you need to know to really understand why we're doing all of this technical stuff here. This project is a great way to prepare for this security specialist super badge. It includes lots of really fundamental concepts and understanding how security works in Salesforce. After this video, you will be able to pass this unit with confidence. Let's get started. Okay, this starts off with this introduction uh, talking about John Wiseman has security concerns. He wants to reduce the chances of unauthorized access to data housed in Salesforce. Okay, this requires a little bit of explanation. The basic idea within data security is to give the minimum amount of access possible necessary for the person to do their job. This is a really cool uh, chart, you know, which uh, to me, I'd like to go a little bit more metaphorical in explaining what Salesforce is and how security works within Salesforce. So for a moment, picture your Salesforce org like a store where only people who are authorized are able to enter, like one of those um, you know, membership stores like Costco, where if you have the right access and credentials, you're able to enter. And that's where we then open the door for you, and then you're able to enter. That store, that's like your Salesforce org. Inside of the store, of course, there's aisles. Aisles are these big groupings where you could find all sorts of similar related products. Aisles in Salesforce are sort of like objects, this big grouping of information. If we switch from looking at this 2D view to you know looking at it this way and looking at it straight in, you would then see that there's shelves. And then shelves are ways that you've grouped other products you know, that are in that aisle. And your shelf is sort of like your record. And then exactly the products themselves on the shelves, well, that's sort of like the field. Now in Salesforce, you can control access to everything, to the org, to the object, to the record, and to the field. And that makes sure that only people who need to see the information are able to see it. I wanna take another minute and explain this concept a little bit further to explain how this fits its way through the rest of Salesforce. Well, as you think about these different objects, you could basically take these objects, group them together, and as a group, that becomes an app. So your sales app is a group of objects. Your service app, your marketing app, any custom app you make is also gonna be a, just a grouping of objects. And objects, of course, are gonna include the records and fields associated with it. By the way, you also have page layouts. That's how that information gets displayed and the page layout is gonna be dependent on who the user is. And we'll talk more about that in a little bit about the different types of users. An app is a really great way for being able to interact with the data, to put more information in and to act on that in data. So whether it's moving an opportunity forward or responding to steps on a case if in service or creating a marketing campaign in Marketing Cloud, right? Each one of those things is happening inside of that app. We can then analyze the data that's in that app using a report. And with those reports, we could create charts, we could embed those charts, and that becomes dashboards. The security settings that we set over here make their way all the way through for every single step along the process. So if you set a certain field level security setting, that's gonna impact what the user is able to see in terms of their page layout. It's gonna impact how it shows up in the reports and it's gonna show up how it shows up for that user in the dashboard. So the, the whole thing makes its way all the way around. It's consistent throughout the entire org. Now, in terms of what the user sees, that's gonna be a combination of really two things. What are the default sharing settings for this specific item that we're talking about, and who is this user? Depending on the field level settings, the object level settings, and who the user is, meaning what their profile is, what their role is, if there's any permission sets that determine that the person should have access, those are all going to fit together to determine if that person can actually see that information. And these things, we're gonna talk about them and build them out right now and talk about why they're unique and different. So that was a bit of a long introduction to security within Salesforce, but hopefully this will help set the table as we make our way through the rest of this project. 
Restrict login hours on the support profile. Okay, so you're gonna come over here and go into your setup and then we're gonna do this. I wanna explain though a little bit about why as a business you want to restrict login hours on the support profile. Support centers typically are very metric based. And so we wanna know what's the first call resolution? How quickly you know, were we able to close a case on the first call? What was the time to resolution? How long was the case open for? From the time the case got opened to the time the case got closed, how fast did that take? How many cases did each support rep close? Who's the high performer? Who's the low performer? We wanna know all of that information. And the support personnel might have access to really sensitive information. We don't necessarily want them to be able to access that information all of the time anywhere because we want to, you know, maybe only be able to let them access it when they're actually on premise. So that's why for our support reps, we want to restrict their access login hours because we don't want them logging in anytime. We want to make sure that as we're looking at our support reps and as our support centers, we want to be analyzing the metrics in a consistent way. And the only way to do that for sure is to make sure that they're open for the same number of hours. Let's do this now. We're gonna go into profiles. And from quick find and then select profiles. Let me close this. We're then going to click on custom support profile. And then under login hours, we're gonna click edit. And we have to make sure that the time is set to Pacific. And then we're gonna set it with these values. So it's basically gonna be closed on Sunday and Saturday and open 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. every other day of the week. And then we're gonna click save. Now we're going to restrict the login IP range on the custom support profile. So if you don't know what IP is, then go into Google for a second and type in what's my IP and you will see that you have this internet protocol as a unique identifier number based off of where you are connecting to the internet. A business would want to set certain IP ranges that their users on, could log in on so that way they're only accessing the internet or their org from that specific location that has that IP address. This is a way of securing and making sure that people are accessing the information that they're supposed to access only where they're supposed to access it. And like I said, with our support people, because they're accessing secure information, we might only want them to access it from their support center. So under login IP ranges, click new and enter the details. and then click save. Okay, so at this point we've restricted access to the org that we talked about at the beginning just for a specific profile, our support profile. We also talked about why it's important to restrict access for our support centers because that's unique in terms of how support centers typically operate. Let's go ahead and verify this step. I've already completed this project before in a different Trailhead Playground, so if this works, I should get some confetti now.